What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Please welcome Michael Emanu. He is a musician and producer. He is joining us from Montreal. Michael, thank you for joining us today. Can you please introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about your background? All right. Well, thanks for having me today. I greatly appreciate it. I know you're very, very busy with your time. Uh, so I'm Michael Emino, <laughs> and I'm a musician, producer. Um, I've played in a various, various genres of music, from orchestral music to playing in dance clubs. Uh, currently, I've been doing a lot of more study music, lo-fi, hip-hop stuff, as well as I've just started a classical piano uh, sub-project, which I'm quite excited about. Very cool. Actually, I do have some people I'm going to connect you with. Um, I, I, I'm, do you, are you on Instagram? Yep. So I'm no okay. music link, okay. link, link below. <laughs> yeah, we'll put all the, don't worry. We're going to go through all those links, you guys. And, but I, you know, I'm just a forever networking and trying to connect people, but why don't you tell us about your, see, I feel like me, like being an artist, like, cause I consider myself an artist. Like this is a form of art mm -hmm. where I'm talking to people, Absolutely. Putting, putting content out there. I'm creating, um, but I'm creating with, you know, great guests like yourself. I feel like it is a really tough road you know, um, to be an artist, to be a creator and to, to make a living off of it. So can you talk about your journey? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess, and this is something I tell a lot of uh, younger musicians is that one of the biggest challenges that people have is they confuse music or painting or dance or whatever it is, your, your endeavor, they confuse the artistic aspect and the business aspect of it. Sure. And that often it's very important to really separate these two things uh, because when you entwine them, if, if you start to equivocate your bank account with the value of the art you're creating, you're, you're going to get depressed and you're going to question whether or not you're making an artistic statement. So I feel it's very important. Make the beauty, make the art that you that you want to make and then separately look at how can you monetize on that now as soon as you say monetize a lot of artists are like oh that, that's horrible how could he be saying that but uh, you have to live you, know, you have to survive no you you have to live it's like okay well or you can monetize by working at 7-eleven all day uh and and i think that there's a, a more effective way to do that sure. so i've always in all my life as a musician i've always taken jobs that pay music uh sorry that pay money money play music <laughs> hey music sure <laughs> music. yeah here you go um and um and as i've continued my career i've just sort of shifted around because i also i don't want to be bored so i like i said i started as a playing in an orchestra when i was younger and i didn't really like it and i became a jazz musician and did that for a long time and then got into electronic music production because i was got into, into this club scene yeah which led to now I'm actually have like a folk band and then I'm doing some sort of hip-hop music as well as I'm doing classical music hip -hop, that's like what a drastic swing there that's pretty well no no it's it's all there's so many types of music and and again well, look I mean your your what your podcast is the no label thing so let's uh yeah <laughs> If you think about it, why we when we label ourselves, I mean, this is something that happens. People will say, well, what type of music do you do? Right. And it's like, well, I like to say I do the music that interests me. Sure. And there's a lot of things that interest me. So uh, it's not like, you know, it's not like you only ever watch one television show. Depending on your mood, you're going to do different things. And that's how I feel about music. Right sure. now, I'm very interested in classical <laughs> piano music. And this is a new thing for me. So I'm going to pursue it. And at the same time, as I make the music, I'm going to look at different avenues to generate money off it. So very I don't cool. have to do anything else. Yeah, very cool. So yeah, like I, I feel you were he you were heading somewhere with that and you putting labels. So I feel like if we put labels on ourselves, we limit ourselves, you know? Absolutely. So that's why to me, why, why my message is so important is because people, I think a lot of, there is a small percentage, even though I'm talking to in dynamic people like yourself, like nonstop, we're a small per percentage of the people that are living like the way we want. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, um, it's the society is not really set up for you to go out and, and make it on your own under your, you know, under your own terms or, or however you want to describe it. And uh, there's just a lot of different reasons why it's not possible. And I mean, even you know, during this COVID time has been brutal. About a third of the musicians I know, and this is actually, I just received a survey from the Quebec Musicians uh, Union. About a third of musicians are expected to never perform professionally again after the by the time COVID's over. And this is in the states too. This is everywhere yeah. because there were so many people that were sort of on the edge. 
sure. anyway. And then this was sort of the, this was the, the, the straw, the camel straw metaphor. Right. And, uh, and it's tough. I mean, I've had to, a year ago when this started, I had three world tours booked. I was going to be, I had about 70 different shows with my own band. Wow. And everything was, you know, immediately canceled. And I've got to look, I've got two kids and yeah. uh, a wife and like, what am I going to do? So I have, like I said, I've, I've pivoted very quickly. I'm doing this lo-fi hip hop music now. I've got in this classical music and I do really care about these types of music, but I'm also have to look at them very practically. Can right. I survive while doing this? And can, at the same time, can I be happy? Sure. So that's sort of, that's where I'm at today. <laughs> That's good though that you've pivoted and you've, you know, because I think I had a guest and we actually did an in-person interview downtown in the city and he talked about how you have to adapt, you know, with everything that has Absolutely. happened. Absolutely. If, if you have not learned to adapt or pivot, like you say, like, I don't know how people are, are surviving, you know, it's because it's a... I really don't. You know, I mean, what, you know what I mean? Sorry, I got to grab this mic. Yeah. I've got animals, so this is real life here. Oh no! Hey, look! If the mailman comes, my dog dog is gonna freak out for about fifteen seconds. So that that could be an exciting teaser for the show. That's all good. We like we like the fur baby. I I've got four. So I've got a, two cats and two dogs. That I just picked up a. Well, she's a, she was a foster. Now I'm adopting her. But congratulations! That's great. Yeah, she's like twelve weeks, but she's definitely keeping me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness so what so you have all these great things that are on the horizon that you're going to be doing um can you maybe talk about how some of your some of your accomplishments i was you've done a lot of great stuff here i'm reading your your bio really quick and um oh well, you were did stuff with Cirque du Soleil very cool oh my gosh so what's one of your favorite projects that you've done in your career <sighs> My favorite, well, I would say my two favorite ones, one actually happened while I was in, I was living in San Francisco for a long time. And I was part of this collective in the 90s to early 2000s of sort of mixing electronics and jazz music, uh, but in a very humanistic way where the musicians were leading the machines versus generally in club music, the machines sort of lead the humans. Yeah, okay. Uh, but in this case, we were using a lot of, at that point, new technology. And since everything was new and there was really no rules about how this was to be done, we would just play these really long sets of integrating DJs, MCs, jazz musicians, electronics, loopers, and laptops. And we had, we must have done like uh, maybe 200 shows of like unorganized improvised music and ended up creating a really large following. We turned into a big band, released a number of albums. So that was really great. Yeah. Uh, Currently, I have a project with my best friend growing up, and we are doing a comp. He, who is a very accomplished singer songwriter uh, in the roots and uh, folk world, yeah. And we now have a group where we mix sort of what I know in sort of the jazz world and um, sort of old, old ragtime and you know even 18th century music, mixing that with what he does. And uh, we were recently nominated for the Canadian Folk Music Awards Band of the Year, waiting for the results right now. And uh, we tour a lot. We're starting to work on our third album. And I get to, you know, play creative music with my best friend growing up. So that the, is really it's cool. wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, I, it's been great. If you, I mean, that's nice to have a best friend that you have that kind of energy and that flow with because Absolutely. to create with someone, you have to have that energy. You have and also that somebody energy. that you can tell them when what you can tell them that you don't like what they're doing as well as what you do like because uh, you know it's hard to be creative if you're walking on eggshells at times you got to say to people well uh, you know Meh. yeah <laughs> yes. without worrying about it slowing down the process yeah. what is good everyone this is your host deanna Kempel with label free podcast live your best life you must live label free ho 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 ladies the holidays came early not only for you but for your man here at manscaped the leading men's hygiene brand. Manscaped just launched new products that your man will actually use, including their all new ultra premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Also, this awesome refined cologne. It smells so sexy. My man loves it. I love him wearing it, especially after he's all clean shaven, using the lawnmower 4.0 and trimming those nasty nose hairs and those ear hairs. You know, you know what I'm saying, ladies? It's time to give the man in your life the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Go to manscaped.com and use the code labelfree20 for 20% off and free shipping. That's right, ladies, 20% off and free shipping 
with the code labelfree20 at manscaped.com. Really true. Wow, that's really cool. You got some great stuff going on. Um, Thanks. Do you have any like good words of wisdom that you could share? Like as far so for we did touch on like younger musicians, artists that are coming up, especially right now. Like I, I would yeah. like to know like wh what would you recommend that they would do right now if they are just starting off their career, especially in this climate. Right. So if you're starting off your career, and in fact, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine yesterday whose son is 18 and, and is uh, doing a lot of uh, hip hop rapping type stuff. And well, first of all, it, it's very challenging because the whole how when I was younger, I was able to go out playing clubs five nights a week and make a living. And that sort of doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you can still go to be playing in clubs, but especially if you're a hip hop artist, you're going to be one of 20 people maybe you're paying even to get on stage. So it's not really a business in that sense. But how I've seen how people are making money uh, is, uh, well, let's put it this way. It, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but you have to become famous or Latin, maybe not famous, but you have to have a following of some sort. So I would then suggest that you've got to go get your music out. If, if you're a producer, rapper, Get your music on SoundCloud. I wouldn't even worry about Spotify right now, or the you know the the um, the streaming platforms that pay. Yeah. Because the amount of money that you're going to be making is so small anyway. Sure. It's more important to get an authentic, you know, a really an, an authentic following, because uh, I see a lot of people that are putting their music up on Spotify, putting up on Apple Music, and then paying services to promote their music. Yeah. But they're not really, I mean, this is the same in the podcast world and YouTube world that are, you know, I, I get emails saying, do you want 10,000 likes on your Spotify page? It's like pay $500 and boom, you get them. But this doesn't, this, there's no longevity in this. All you've done is, is you've paid money for a very short, it's like a, it's like eating a sugar cookie. You know, so I I've feel done, great. Yeah. I've done some of that stuff in my, one of my previous businesses, but there is, I do do Google ads for my podcast. yeah I, I do facebook ads well, but it's the same thing because it's oh and this facebook ad thing is a disaster right now with the ios 14 and it's like i'm very confused very <laughs> <laughs> it's changing. it keeps changing it keeps know? changing but but again because with those type of ads you are trying to gain a direct audience from yeah. you to these people uh and especially if you're a young musician you've got to find the great thing about right now is that you can have the most obscure genre of music. Uh, if you do it well and you're passionate about it, there are people out there who are going to follow that. In fact, I, it was a, I made a reference to yesterday, a bass player friend of mine, I'd, I'd said, well, you could make, you know, digital bass remixes using loopers of the Aphex Twins. Mm -hmm. And you could be the, and you would be the best person in the world at that. Now, maybe there's only a hundred followers, but if, if you have a hundred dedicated followers, they tell, if they love you, they're going to tell 10 people each and then right. you've got a thousand and then it grows up, but it has to be some, something. And again, yeah. this, this doesn't have to be music. This is anything. It's got to be something of quality that you believe in because you've got to be behind it a hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, these are more general terms, but whatever it is, music, art, art, whatever, yeah. it has to be something that you really care about. Because if you're going to go mainstream, you're going to get blown away because Universal and Sony have millions of dollars to purchase whatever they need. Right. So yeah. you know, I, I, that's I it. think like this, th these days with social media and all these different outlets that we have to promote for free are, are what we're creating. It's very important to have a, to make sure you have your own personal brand, whatever that exactly. Is. So like, you know, my, my boyfriend, he does not understand social media at all. He does not get it. He's not a social media person. So yeah, yeah. He okay, gets well, he's, little... he's very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he doesn't get like why I'm always on it. I, right, right, right. Present. I'm, like he thinks it's, he's like, you just constantly need attention. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm like, I have a podcast and I'm trying to grow. I love what I'm doing. So I have to be out there. I have to be in front of people. And this is my brand. This is who I am. Like, exactly. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. who I am per se, but this is what. Well, no, but this is, this is the thing that you're, I mean, I, I mean, that's something I had to wrestle with with a long, for a long time was the idea that I am a brand. Yeah. And especially once the COVID thing, it was became very dramatic because be, before COVID, I used to get hired by different bands, uh, by different producers that would hire me 
under their name. So I would go, oh, we would go to France for a month and do a bunch of concerts, but it was never my name. Yeah. But the work kept coming in. Now, none of that is going to be happening really probably for, uh, I don't mean to be grim, but three to five years, I think, until, this, until there's real decent business opportunities for touring musicians. Okay, after COVID. Yeah, after COVID. Yeah. So uh, I need to make a brand now so that when this is all over, I can go out and do what's next. Yeah. Uh, because in the meantime, it's my previous career doesn't exist currently. And that's, it's unfortunate, but it is. It's very, so, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. But it is. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm just refused to accept it. Ah! <laughs> well, don't you go go um, go look at your concert listings and, and see all the big acts that are playing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's because even when this breaks, if you were going to go see uh, uh, Britney Spears or I, whatever it is, these these concerts are organized over a year in advance. Yeah. So we're looking at 22, 23. 23 24 because you need the investors right if, if you're putting out a big show or even a small show whatever it is it there's so many parts it's not you just don't show up on stage and hey it's uh there's there's so many factors to it so yeah yeah um, it's unfortunate that uh yeah, well, i mean there's, but, so, there's so many people that have been affected it's not just the musicians so oh no no this so is everybody industry. every yeah so crazy. but i look at it this way i'm now making two new genres the, between the lo-fi hip-hop and this this piano thing i would have never done this i wouldn't have had time to do it and it's been really exciting and i'm really happy because i'm getting to express myself in a different way again so you know i, I can go oh this is really sad i'm oh hey i'm i'm alive <laughs> you yeah, know so exactly. so let's uh, let's use this time well i love it with that being said, Michael, can you give us, uh, so if anybody is out there, if you're a musician or someone that wants to follow Michael, can you please t drop all your links? <laughs> and I'll okay. put it in the description of the episode. Okay. okay. Well, I guess the main thing is is to, and I tell this to everybody, if you're going to, I Instagram is MNO Music, and there's a bunch of links there. I've got one of those link tree things. And okay. if you don't know what link tree is, it's, it's very <laughs> practical. Uh, I ask everyone to please follow. Um, my different uh in sorry i i asked everybody to please follow my spotify page which is well there's i have different ones i've got mno the letters mno and i have michael mno okay uh, for different genres of music and it's very important that you follow and this is for anybody if you like something on spotify please follow them there's a little heart up top and that means that you're going to be getting all their new music and the spotify algorithm cares and yeah. the spotify algorithm basically is controlling a lot of what you hear as a listener so it's the same thing you have a youtube channel please like and subscribe because yeah. this feeds the youtube algorithm and whether we like it or not that is how media is getting uh distributed yeah. i also have a couple of youtube channels i have one for music education uh and i have another one for my that actually has all my live music and stuff which is quite fun awesome. i also have a couple oh my let's really do this I also have an online music education, uh, teaching uh, kids and adults how to play music by ear. Okay. And I have another thing on music theory. Again, all the links will be below. Uh, I'm trying to expand very quickly. There's, I've, I do believe with my, as you can tell, I'm not a 23-year-old uh, playing. <laughs> so I have a lot of knowledge at this point. I've done this sure. for a long time. And uh, I believe I have something of value to share with people. Absolutely. So, I totally agree. Um, before we wrap things up, is there any last pieces of advice, wisdom, something that you want to share before we the big, let the, you go? The, 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 we're going to tie this up in a bow. Uh, yes. <laughs> tie them. Uh, basically, uh, it's very cliche, but it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. Half of the projects I do, in fact, sort of a, a, as a goal, I, every year I probably start four or five new projects. Yeah. Three of them kind of peter long and die out one of them kind of sustains and one of them sort of gives me the the financial stability that i need to move on and when the next year comes i'll make you know another four or five things and again this sort of pattern keeps happening uh but those three things that didn't work out it's okay yeah it was fun to do them and uh 
as, as long as you keep creating and being smart about it. So again, treat it like a business and treat it like something that you really care about. And if you wrap that all together, you'll be okay. Yeah. There's my, there's my, there's my uh, tying the bow. No, I love it. That was really that was <laughs> into the story. Advice. I know it's, it's true. I do. I do believe this to be true. So, and I hope everybody can find what they want to say. Yeah. Amen to that. All right. With that being said, Michael, thank you so much for being a guest. Thanks I for look forward me. to, we were going to, we're going to, we'll do a follow-up, you know, and maybe like four to six months and see where you're at and all that good stuff, because you're going to rock it and roll in and I'm going to make some introductions for you, but thank you so much. You gotta guys, keep, this, gotta, gotta keep moving forward. Uh, absolutely. Hey, man, that's it. Gotta keep, <laughs> keep going. I totally agree. <laughs> All right, you guys. This is your host, Deanna Kempel, with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.